Hi, I'm Ryan. And Kate, is that right? Yes, perfect. Perfect. Great. So we spoke on the phone earlier. I'm with the Child Safe Kit program. We'll be covering that tonight. Uh, before I come in, would you like me to take off my shoes? That would be a big help. Thank you so much. Okay. Come on in. Yeah, so nice to meet you. It's Kate, right? Correct. Oh, oh what a day. Well, so happy we got to saw a lot of families today. Yeah, I understand. I just got back from work, so I appreciate uh, you yeah. can make it work. Exactly. <laughs> Three kids, are, are these them right here? Actually? Yeah, they are. So oh, my little wow. trio, my clan that I have about. Oh my gosh, so what are their names? How old are they? Oh yeah, so Parker is the oldest. Um, he, this is an older picture, he just turned six. And then my twins are four and a half. We have Abigail and Oliver, so it's Parker, Abby, and Ollie. So yeah, that's my group, that's my clan. Oh, they're so sweet. Thank oh, you. Oh man, I love all the little toys and little <laughs> art I saw. Oh, such a beautiful home you have. Oh my gosh, Thank look you. at this. Very spacious, I like Thank it. Thank you. Oh, you got little artists over here? Oh yeah, Abby can produce about a million pictures a day, so definitely have to keep her busy. Oh man, I should hire her. She could, she could decor my house. In yeah. two minutes. And Hot Wheels, no, and it's a loop. Hey, wow. you know what, my boys like to make sure all the tricks are done the way they need to be done. So yeah. bigger, better, all that good stuff. Yep. Oh yes, yeah, too much fun. I, I blasted those when I was a kid. And, oh my gosh, and you're a Sharks fan too? Absolutely, I believe too. <laughs> You think Jumbo Joe will take us all the way to this year? Gosh, I really hope so before he goes into retirement. Yeah, jeez, the Sharks need a cup. Absolutely. They deserve it. Oh my gosh, they're such a good team. Oh, Plus, yeah. imagine how the Bay would take that. Oh. It'd be amazing. That would be super cool. All right, so I'm gonna make this up fast and easy for you this evening. Great, I've seen you. lots of families already today, and I'll see you uh, uh, plenty after our meeting here tonight. So, thank you, thank you. So again, my name is Ryan. I'm from American Inco, and we handle the permanent benefits for over 41,000 organizations internationally. That's including police, uh, firefighters, and teachers. Um, is this the first time you've requested this service? Yeah. Okay, yeah. You, so your friend, um, Ksenia, um, yeah, she told me you'd also be interested in child safety kits. So my job is easy. I'm here for a few reasons, all right? So first is to provide the child safe kit. Um, to go over the family information guide. Next, I'll explain your accidental death and dismemberment policy. All right, and then I'll go over the officer report form. All right, but most importantly, I'm here to go over the benefits that they asked me to set up for you. Great. Okay, so I'm bringing my laptop here. Just gonna make our time a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, the next benefit for you is the family information guide. Right, so this is basically a roadmap of you uh, to make a tough time for your family just a little bit easier when you pass. All right, so the next benefit you're entitled to is a $4,000 actual death and dismemberment policy. Right, um, this means that it works as both a living and a death benefit. Right, so you have to lose a hand, a foot, or sight in one eye, you'd actually get half of the benefit. Right, in the case that you're to lose any combination of two. Right, so two hands or two feet, they actually pay out a full benefit. Um, but most importantly, if you were to pass in an accident, it would pay out the full benefit amount to your beneficiary. Right, so we're gonna start here. To designate your beneficiary, uh, you're going to fill this out and sign at the bottom. All right, the next benefit is really cool. Because you requested this service, they're giving you $30,000 worth of these $2,000 union final expense benefits that you're able to gift to your close friends and family in the area. Now, it doesn't cost you anything. And the reason they're doing this is because they found that nine out of 10 times, um, when something happens to a close friend or family member, it's usually the person who is working who forks out the money uh, for the funeral and final expenses. So they realized every person could use an extra $2,000. And the good news is, hey, your three emergency contacts will automatically receive the benefit, right? That leaves you really with a handful left. And the only stipulations are, look, they must be over the age of 18. They must live in the area. And I'm only able to help out one per household, right? They just need to name a number. Uh, so we're gonna start off by helping your family first. What and sisters do you have in the area? You know, my brother just lives right up the street and then my sisters are just a couple of suburbs away in Folsom and Rancho. Oh wow, mm -hmm. okay. So what's the closest relative's first name in the area? David, okay. my brother. 
And what's the closest friend's uh, first name in the area? Friend? Probably my friend Ksenia that you already met. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. And what's uh, your closest coworker's first name in the area? Gosh, um, probably Christy. I know she lives not too far from here, but we both work at the college. Perfect. All right, so what's gonna happen over the next few days is I'm going to place a phone call to the people listed to explain exactly how the policy works, right? And to make it a little less awkward for them, I'm gonna send them a text message or send one to you, really, that you can forward to them so they can expect my call in the future. And to make things even quicker, I'm going to have you send a text message to everyone before we move forward. We're just gonna knock it out one by one so you won't have to worry about it later. Do you know how to forward a text message? Yeah, I do. Okay, great. If anyone has a significant other or spouse, I'm gonna throw in a no cost benefit for them also. First one we can send it to is your brother, uh, David. Now, is he married or in a relationship? He is a single dad. Okay, and is he working or between jobs? Oh, he's working. Okay. Um, when you're done sending it to David, uh, let me know and I can give you the next one. Okay, great. So when it comes to police association benefits, each family is really seen differently because each family has a different need and a different want. So what's right for you might not be right for the family I just enrolled or the family that I need to qualify after you. So since everyone has a different need and a different want, I'm gonna ask you some questions so we can see how we can maximize your benefits. So as you know, benefits over the years have just gotten worse and worse everywhere causing you and families just like yourself to have gaps in their coverage. So with input from AIL, from the police officers and teachers, and families like yourself, um, they've come up with a list of concerns that need to be addressed to ensure your family has exactly what they deserve, a full circle of protection. Now, the first concern has to do with savings, right? Do you know what percent of your income you're supposed to save every time you get paid? Yeah, well every financial advisor would recommend that you save at least 10 to 20% every time you get paid and have at least six months of income for an emergency, right? So how many families do you think are act actively saving 10 to 20%? You just said it and I was like, yeah, probably not gonna happen for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, not very many. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is such a major concern for everybody. And how are you doing in the savings department? I'm doing okay, but I'm still supporting three kids, you know, and working full time. I, that's what I have to do. So saving could be better, but it's not great. I hear you. So if they were able to help you save more money over time, you'd obviously be all over it, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's what everyone says. Now the next concern has to do with loss of wages, co-pays, and deductibles, right? This has to do with health insurance. So do you have health insurance? I do, I actually have it provided by my employer. Okay, great. Now, let's say though that you're locked up in the hospital because of an injury, right? You got hurt or worse, you got in a bad car accident. In those situations, does your health insurance uh, pay you or pay your doctors in the hospitals? Doctors, of course. Exactly, so when you're hurt, don't you still have bills to pay? Oh yeah. And don't you still have rent? Mortgage, car insurance, utilities, food to keep on the table. See, those bills don't stop when you're racked up in the hospital for a week or two. Um, so they set this benefit up that puts money into your pocket to cover lost wages. So you can continue to pay your bills while you're in the hospital, like another source of income, right? So now you can see how critical this is to protect the situation, right? Concern has to do with funeral and final expenses. Mm. So Kate, do you know how much an average funeral costs? Only what I've seen on those commercials on TV. Exactly, right? It's about ten to fifteen thousand dollars. So tell me, do you have an extra ten to fifteen thousand set aside specifically for a funeral? <laughs> no, not at all. No, I mean not many people do. Um, so because of that problem, they set up a benefit that pays an immediate sum of money, right? Which is handled actually through this right here the Freedom of Choice Certificate. Now this process is very simple, right? When you pass away, your beneficiary will take this certificate, they're gonna hand it to the funeral home, and the funeral home will take care of everything, right? Any money that's left will actually go back to your family, right? And if you're the funeral home director, tell me, when do you want to get paid? Immediately. 
immediately. Exactly, right? So you can see how critical it is that we have this in place for your family, right? Yeah. Now the next concern has to do with income, okay. right? So you, if you were to pass away, your family is obviously going to miss you, right? Yeah. Of course. And after a few weeks, after a few months even, what are they gonna miss next? Mm. Right? They're gonna miss the income. Yeah. Okay. Because when you pass away, your paycheck dies with you. Now, are you prepared to have someone work an additional 40 to 60 hours on top of your current hours and still take care of your kids and the house? Exactly. I'm sure you can see why this is such a major concern, right? Now, the next concern has to do with families who have a mortgage, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, are you guys renting or do you own this house? Own it. Okay, gotcha. Well, um, do you have something in place that would pay off the rest of the house if you were to pass away? <laughs> no, not at all. Gotcha. And that's actually what I hear most families say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next concern has to do with cancer. Um, now, do you know someone who's dealt with cancer? Yeah, I do. And who was it? A really close co-worker friend of mine. I'm so sorry to hear that. And what kind was it? Breast cancer. Oh my gosh, and how's she doing with that? She's managing as best as she can. Well, I know how it is. You know, I've actually had some people close to me who've had cancer as well. Uh, so it's very irrelevant nowadays. And the scary thing is that according to the American Cancer Society, one out of every two men, right, will experience cancer in his lifetime. And pertaining to women, it's one out of three. But after the age of 65, that goes up to one in two as well. So all around, all around really cancer is basically just a coin flip whether it runs in your family or not. Now, do you know what the number one cause of bankruptcy is right now in America? Medical bills? You nailed it, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Do you think if you're dealing with radiation, with chemotherapy, special dieting, different things that come with cancer, that you'd be able to work at the same time? Oh, not at all. Exactly. And you can see why this is such a concern to the other members, right? But the biggest concern is affordability. The group needed to come up with a plan that addressed all these concerns, yet was still affordable enough for every single family to enroll, as long as they could qualify, right? Now, what makes this different is that they already have gone through the open market. They shopped around and compared company to company. And this is what they came up with for the members. There are three stipulations to qualify for these benefits. First, you must be a member in good standing or sponsored by one, which you are, or I wouldn't even be here, right? Second, you need to take advantage of the open enrollment period, which is today. Clear? Third, you must qualify. Not everyone does. In fact, that can actually be the toughest part, um, but we'll see in a second if you do. Right. So how much do you make per hour? 25 bucks. Okay. Um, now tell me, if your boss increased your hours by two hours a week, would you go out buying a Lamborghini or a Ferrari? Oh no, not at all. Of course not. See, the point is, with the extra hours gained, you wouldn't be rich, right? Not at all. Right, and on the flip side, if you work two hours less a week, would you come home and see your house boarded up? Um, you know, your kids on the street with no food or no future? I would make different arrangements. <laughs> yeah, see, of course not. But when you get in an accident, get cancer, or worse yet, die and lose a paycheck forever, right? What would that look like for your family, for your kids? It's hard to even think about. Right? This is why they set this up for you. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions to see what you qualify for. It's kind of like having the option between two jobs, right? Job A, which is where you're currently at with your existing benefits, and job B, where you still have all your existing benefits, you basically make exactly the same amount of money and you get all these additional benefits permanently for life, right? Which job would you choose for your family? That's a no-brainer, B. Yeah, and why would you choose job B, but when you're making more, which job A? Because protecting my family is important. Exactly, see that's what all members say. So Kate, what's more, what's the most important thing to you in the world? My kids, hands down. Yeah, me too, it's family, mm -hmm. right? And what are they worth to you? There's no number I can ever associate with them. 
Exactly. They're priceless. Mm -hmm. Right? We can't put a price on our family, but there is a price for protecting our family. So when do you feel is the best time to start protecting your family? As soon as possible. That's exactly why they set this up for you. Considering it all makes sense, they're giving you two options to choose from. Option one, which covers you for two hours of wages, or option two, which covers you for time and a half. So which option works best for you? Probably the two hours of wages would be better for me, I think. You got it. It's yeah. option one? Yeah. Okay. I'm not an underwriter, but based on what I'm seeing here, you should be able to qualify for these benefits. Really, the point is, this is not a short-term fix. It's a long-term solution, right? So the longer you're in the program, the more value. So if this amount is uncomfortable for you right now, let's fix this while I'm here. You know, I really want to think about it. No problem. Hey, I can understand that. I'm the exact same way. Like I said before, they want us to do this on an enrollment basis. Like the letter said that I explained before. So they figured they could do it this way because they already checked out everything and approved it for the members. Right? The main thing is getting in on the benefits but keeping it comfortable. Now most members are enrolling at this level. But these are your benefits. You own them and you control them and they can be adjusted at any time. Right? I know that you see the benefits here, right? So I'm sure if I was offering you this entire program for free, you'd be all over it, correct? Okay, great. Then here's what's probably coming down to a matter of comfortability or and affordability, right? Okay, so here's, here's what I'm going to do. I still, you know, I still wanna think about it. Okay. So I wanna make sure you do see that this program has value for your family. As you know, they have me running around like crazy, seeing a bunch of family members in a lot of different groups. Now keep in mind, you own and control these benefits, and this is your enrollment period, right? So here's what we're gonna do that we can at least get your foot in the door. I really just can't afford it. I can understand that. It's so difficult nowadays to make ends meet. You know, every time we're getting ahead, another bill pops up and puts us back in the hole again. But when you think about it, over the years, whenever anything has come up, you've been able to make whatever adjustments were necessary to keep food on the table and keep lights on. A lot of the time, the family can take you for granted, but you're the one that gets up in, from, in the morning, you're the one that goes to work and brings money home to make all ends meet. The only thing that could ever prevent you from being able to do that is if you aren't here anymore. Suddenly, that income that we all take for granted is cut off forever. And that's an adjustment your family couldn't possibly make without you. Sure, this amount a week is another adjustment to make, but just treat it as if Uncle Sam increased your taxes, right? You're here now and you can make it as you always have. Don't forgo your family's financial future for a lifestyle now. Does that make sense? So here's what we're going to do. Now, I know you guys were unsure about the initial program, but this has got to be more comfortable for you. You know, I have enough insurance. I can understand why you would think that. I mean, if I had $100,000 or even $150,000 of insurance, that would seem like a lot of money. In fact, I mean, if we were to stack that much money on this table, I don't know how high it would go. But then think about your income, right? Something that we all take for granted, being gone forever. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like that much money, right? For example, your income now is about $40,000 a year. And you've been making that for the last about five years, right? So that's about 200,000. So how much of that do you have left? So you see, if something had happened five years ago, where would your family be today, right? Exactly, trying to figure out what government line to stand in or figuring out what to sell. It's very difficult to have enough or too much insurance. So it always, always comes down to a matter of comfortability and affordability. Now most members are rolling at this level. 
Is this comfortable for you? Or should we make some adjustments?